all alone Going down to the river I'm going down there all alone If I can't swim like a fish, baby Well, I guess I'll sink like a stone My name is Jerry Muma. I was raised in Smithville, Ohio, in northern Ohio, and I lived my, most of my adult life in southeast Ohio, in Athens County. And I made the move to Belize about six years ago, almost exactly six years ago. It would have been better if we'd left a year or two earlier, because I was, uh, I, I just, I, I can't stand it there anymore. Traffic is a big problem. Well, we lived in a town of 4,000, and I had road rage every day. Um, the political system, all of it, all of it. The people, I mean, after 9-11 and people got into this all, God bless you, crap, just drove me nuts. I couldn't stand it. And I couldn't stand it before that. And this just up amped it up that much more. So I feel like I've been per permanently damaged psychologically by staying in the States too long. So you're glad you came down here? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I came down here. I had to get out. I had to get out. Either I would have wound up in prison or dead, I'm certain of it. Even in mild-mannered Athens County, Ohio, I was going off. I was ready to put a 45 on my dashboard just so I could wave it around if I needed to. Felt the need to. And that can only lead to personal injury and death and that kind of thing. <laughs> I spend a lot of time alone out here. I'll someday, in the dry season in particular, uh, I'll spend, uh, it's really too hot to do anything at all, except sit in the hammock, lay in the hammock and read or listen to music. Uh, my wife spends a lot of time in the village and I spend very little, so I'm out here almost all the time by myself. And I like it a lot. Spending time alone has given me time to think about the nature of things, and um, I do a lot of mundane things, like swing a machete. Pretty much you just have to make sure you don't chop yourself, you don't chop rocks, you don't chop the trees you want to save, and there's really nothing more to it than that. So I spend a lot of time thinking. I think time and space act differently in different places. I mean, they act one way here and they might act completely differently in ancient Egypt, for example. Um, or modern day, the United States. I think time and space are like a lava lamp, quite frankly. I, I use a lava lamp for a lot of allegories and I think it works and I think they just, they just change and flow with the, the seasons and the tides like everything else does. I don't think time and space should be singled out as this is set in stone, because I don't believe it is. I think it acts, acts like it acts depending on its outside influences and, and inside influences. And I think cultures can, in fact, alter it. I don't think the ancient Maya decided that time was circular. I think it presented itself as circular, and that's why their culture defined it that way. And I took that circular time and adjusted it to be spiral time, like a slinky. Sometimes those rings are right up against each other, sometimes they're farther apart. But when they're right up against each other, those people of a thousand years ago could be right here among us, and we among them, and with the phase shift, we, we don't perceive each other, the parallel universe situation. But objects, this I just came up with this morning, objects seem to slide through. So maybe like there's louver, like louvered windows kind of things mm -hmm. that open and close. And when they're open, those objects can slip through. Like if you put your keys down somewhere or you put a tool down. That's happened to me dozens of times. I put a tool down, I go to pick it up, it's not there. And it's got to be in this radius somewhere because my feet haven't moved. But it's not there. The one thing that turned the corner for me was the, uh, that 
that I have this trail to the coconuts that I walk to gather coconuts to bring them out here to sell or to use. I walk this trail probably twice a week for six years now and um, I chop it on a regular basis and one day I come along and here's this corn grinding stone laying here right on top. I have to assume that it just appeared, that some ancient Mayan woman put it down there just in the last week. So it's a corn grinding stone. They have a, it's a, a matati is what it was called, another stone, and they ground their corn like this on it, ground it into meal to make their uh, tortillas. So I picked this up and I carried it off like I always do with uh, artifacts I find, and then I realized, oh, some ancient Mayan woman probably put that down. She figures she's looking for it. Maybe she figures a kid ran off with it or something. So I felt bad and I, and I brought it back when I remembered it and put it back down there so that when she's ready to use it again, it's there. Now, who knows? It may be in both dimensions at the same time right now. She's probably standing right here with us. But we don't perceive each other because we're trained not to, among other things. Twenty years ago, I was the eternal optimist. I woke up every morning being the eternal optimist, looking forward to the day, looking forward to da 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 da, what everything eternal optimists do. Um, but about, I think it was 95, it happened to me. I just, I think, I, I think what I read was the uh, oh, World Watch puts out a state of the world. Every year they put this thing out. And I read one. And it was so depressing that it just, it just took the wind right out of my sails. And I, I psychologically just threw my hands in the air and said, that's it. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to fight a tide that I know I'm going to lose. And uh, I did that. And, and it was like the weight of the world came off of me. I, I was just a free individual for, uh, well, forever since then, kind of. But then the cynicism, you know, grows like moss once you've made it that kind of a decision. Once you've given up ever winning the fight, then cynicism is the only thing that's left. What I've done is, is shrunk my world. I don't get involved with anything I can't personally control. It's too hard. It's too hard to deal with, so it's much, much preferable to me just to be cynical. And I just have my own mind to satisfy. And that's pretty easy to do. I was uh, 24, and I was living in Northern California, and uh, I had just, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had just retired from working for the man. I had just, I had just been laid off slash fired from the last real job I was going to ever have, and it changed my life. And then in, a year later, this song came out, Jackson Brown, The Pretender, and I just took to it like a duck to water this song because it just said it all so well and it said it sarcastically and sarcasm is my is my humor so um, I just latched onto it and I had this vision for what I wanted out of my life and it entailed uh, you know I I always knew I wanted to help bring down the system as it was, but I didn't want to actively do it. I didn't have the means to actively do it. And so my view was to just do it by inactivity. Don't pay taxes. 
don't contribute in any way. And that's what I did. And it, that was became difficult. Many times. There were tough times in there. Uh, but I, the song, if I got into tough times, I would just sit and listen to the song 10, 15, 20 times in a row. And it would always bring me out on the place I wanted to be. And um, I did that. I listened to this song in those situations for 25 years. It saved me countless times from making bad decisions, from giving into the system. What is the song saying to you? Uh, the song is saying, um, these are your choices. You can get married, get in debt, uh, and we'll have you by the balls for the rest of your life. And that's, you have that choice, and that's really the only choice you have. That's what the song is saying. That's the only choice you have. Uh, and boy, people bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. And I, I'm one of the very, very few I know who didn't and didn't turn to illegal means of making a living uh, to accomplish it. And I pride myself on the fact that I have never prostituted myself for money. Um, I've never actively sought money. And I continue to not actively seek money. And uh, I think it's, it is the root of all evil and the root of all pain. And um, I don't want nothing to do with it. Um, there's a select few of us that don't, and we're most of us poor, and most of us very happy. I have no obligations, and I have never in my life had obligations to anything more than a dog. Yes, I have my wife. I have my obligation to her and my dog, and that's about it. And I'll tell you, that is a great way to go through life. I'm pretty much a-cultural as well as apolitical. I don't think I haven't found a culture um, that meets my high standards for cultures. I guess, um, and and I wonder. I find myself wondering in the wee hours when I'm awake half the night lately, well, will I ever find a culture that I can live with? And I don't think I ever will. I think I will continue to. Uh, live in a cave, psychologically, the rest of my life. But that river keeps on flowing, just like the tears I cry.